Okay, about five minutes later, I used this uh, nail board, a strip of 600 sandpaper. And we now have a very close match. I left the button a little bit taller than on this one because old pipes have been buffed from cleaning and so on and they'll eventually wear down. This is probably what the dimensions of this were, about 20 thousandths taller, about the same dimensions that it was when it was a new pipe. Very close. Um, yeah, the only thing left to do here now is clean up the crease, but we'll do that at final sanding time and enlarge the uh, uh, slot and widen the funnel slightly. I'm going to use the same tool that I did to create it in the first place, which is this little guy, the uh, carving drill. And uh, if you're not, if you don't own one of those, or are they scary too much? Because they, if they, you lose control, you can get like an S curve in your slot, and bingo, you're done. Uh, I would recommend using a uh, thin a needle file that's fairly coarse and just going after it like this. Now, this will take you a while but it's perfectly safe because you can't get ahead of yourself. There's, it's, it's tedious but that's good in the sense that it's very difficult to make mistakes. And then when you get the, the height that the, what you want, then take a round file, a true needle file and they won't even quite fit in there yet. Well, well yeah. And then uh, widen it as much as you like. And then the last little bit would be to get rid or to create a very slight radius around the mouth of that, which would mean taking a piece of sandpaper, folding it like this, make a stiff little corner out of it, and then just go in there and do a little of that. So, I'm going to shut the camera off, spare you from watching me go through the motions, and then uh, when we come back, the slot will be finished. The only thing left to do will be shrink the diameter of this part a little bit, contour the edges slightly. This is not quite what I want. I'll explain at the time. And then we're going to drill a hole in there and put a piece of ivory into it. Making the dot itself is kind of fun. Uh, and there's also a backstory on Dunhill dots that recently came to light. Uh, and then it'll just be final sanding, shine and bend. We still have to refinish the entire stummel, texture this and refinish, but uh, we're just about there. And it's starting to stand. There's not enough material left on the nose of that that it tips over anymore. It stands the way it's intended to do. These are neat little pipes. If you work with a pipe a lot and you don't want to have to carry a rest around, these little cherry woods are just wonderful for that. Alrighty, back in a minute. Okay, the button is finished, shaping wise, and you compare it with one from a similar era. This is also a 1953 pipe. Uh, they cha Dunhill changed some over the years, but you try to match the era, like dot size would be another thing like that. But if you in give it a look, the slot's the same size. The with a This is a little bit taller to emulate a new pipe, but uh, it's, it's all done with uh, uh, nothing more than you've seen so far. The uh, slot itself is a little taller than it started out. And originally, you might remember that we used a little tiny guy in a handpiece, in a Fordham handpiece called a carving drill. It's 1 16th of an inch, and that's actually a little bit loose in there. And it, it's very difficult to make a radius by hand it's better to have a, a drill that's the right size, a carving drill. The next one up, however, that is made for these things is too large for Dunhill. It's uh, suitable for some giant pipes and stuff, or, or larger pipes. 
but there is no in-between size so necessity is the mother of invention I took one of them and chucked it into a cordless drill and held it up against the side or I'm sorry the uh, uh, knife grinder that we used when shaping the barrel of this and so forth uh, the Burr King and actually reduced the diameter of this carving drill now it somewhat dulls the edge of this but because of the way the thing is cut it still works fine on uh, uh, hardened rubber and I took I blunted it a little bit because this needle tip would keep getting stuck in the funnel but anyhow this is now whatever splits the difference between the two this is not commercially available and uh, if you want to use this type of tool a rotary tool to cut slots you'll probably have to make one of these at the same time but that now works like a champ so all that's left is to uh, finish the outside contour of this shrink the the uh, barrel uh, we need to clean up the airway itself it's it's not uh, uh, there's some uh, trash in there from the 128 hanging up on the 125 step down we're going to ream that out just a little bit using a uh, a tapered drill one of these kind of things and uh, put a dot in it polish it up bend it and it, the rest of the pipe we still have to refinish but uh, the stem is about 85 percent done and there you go okay we're back at the French wheel I'm going to use this uh, machine to reduce the diameter of the barrel portion of this stem you remember that uh, I said the shank itself is a has been smoothed and is slightly flared it's from a I'm suspecting a previous re-stem attempt so scuffing it won't uh, matter in this case normally it does and you wouldn't use this method but as long as we have the ability to do it why not I put a, a couple of turns of some plain old scotch tape on there just as a an indicator it'll scuff up and when we get close enough it's just it doesn't accomplish much but let you know when you're getting toward wood you don't want to uh, take off any more than necessary now the uh, there's two things about this that are unusual before I was showing you that I hang my wrist over the disc and look straight down my eyes going dead vertical onto this white card and that allows me to see the uh, uh, gap the interval between the work and the sanding surface which is a completely different thing than sitting in a chair with the disc in front of me at right angles and pushing at it this is a, a precise type of mount also uh, we have a case of where what we want is a flat straight line this way it's it's not to become uh, hourglass shaped yet the surface of this is actually curved or domed and that'll be dealt with by moving the work this way as it's spinning and that sounds like it's really awkward but you get used to it pretty quickly and especially if you've got one hand hanging here you can just get this little swinging motion going and finally you'll see that being able to slow this down in rotational speed is a, a huge asset in fact I wouldn't even try this if I couldn't slow this down if it were uh, spinning at full speed and you were uh, like a traditional French wheel and you tried to do the same operation you had it spinning at full speed you gave it a touch bam you got a flat spot there it just as quick as that and that's absolutely not what you want so we're gonna get this thing going around really slowly we're gonna be swinging it like this in the total time that it'll take me to make one full circuit around here it'll be uh, level and shrunken in uh, not long at all it's a, a handy deal now I gotta run the uh, dust collection system while I'm doing this so I won't be able to talk over it but it's observation is the point of it in any event 
All right. I'll uh, start with the, the machine on a, a fast speed and then slow it down. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see like a spot moving around on there. Uh, actually, just for fun, here's a marker so you can see how fast this thing goes or not. Okay. Ready, begin. And it'll go down to a complete stop and then up to 3600 RPM, which is way faster than we want here. So that was the VFD doing its thing. Highly recommended that you have an adjustable speed on your uh, French wheel because it allows you to do so much stuff with it that you can't do otherwise. So I'm going to turn on the uh, dust collector and uh, actually do the job here and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, that's about as far down as we can take it by hand, or rather with a machine, uh, then we'll complete it by hand. We'll also uh, slightly modify the contour of the sides of this to match Dunhill's pattern. And uh, next, best, or ne next step is to uh, clear out the airway.